Bruce, Donald, and Amanda. Hello. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I am well. That's good. Did you find the grade change form? I did, <laughs> and uh, she fixed it. And, Perfect. Uh, the uh, student emailed me back right away and thanked me. Aw, how nice. Uh, yeah. Hey, Christy. Hey. I hope you guys are enjoying the session so far. I think that's been great. Yeah. Yeah, it has. Yeah. I've been chatting with Bruce about how terrified I am <laughs> of the fall. <laughs> you can do it, Christy. Just You're like the PPE and like <laughs> teaching with a mask. Like, oh my gosh. It's just emotionally like, so you know, I'm very s sensitive as an artist. So I'm like. That's going to be part of the theater. We're going to make it work. You're going to be doing another session about it. <laughs> How to make I know I will. Work, work for you. <laughs> I'm just still like grieving the loss of the way things were. That's what it is. I'm going through this mourning stages and acceptance is not there yet. <laughs> oh, I tell you, you ought to put like 25 years of teaching and have to go through the mourning of it. Well, but also it's like, it's my, I'm like, oh yeah, I've been training to be a professor and can't wait for what it looks like. And now I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> okay. Well, I can say you probably are going through it. it, it yours is, is probably very traumatic and, but different. So I actually, not yeah. that way. It's like, this is what my first year is going to look like. And then this happens. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Lydia was like, welcome to academia. I'm like, oh God. It is not always like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i so there was they released the southeastern theater conference released like a how to reopen events specifically performance events yesterday and that is what got me like so depressed because it was like you have to take everyone's i mean it's all the stuff but seeing it like written out published from a theater i was like oh my god this is you know, you have to stagger audience times when they can enter. Everybody has to leave like an airplane, like everyone closest to the door leaves first. Like just thinking about that. <sighs> you can make weird. it like the grocery store and um, put tape on the floor. Yeah, we would have to do that. We'd have to do probably like a lot more performances because of the limited capacity, you know. Add in doing a weekly performance or maybe two or three weekly performances in which everyone in the audience drinks bread, eats bread, and drinks wine. Oh, in other words, church. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're dealing with as a church is how uh, we do this. Yeah. I've, yeah. I was just about to get into like lect lecturing and everything. Hey at the catholic church and then it was like nope <laughs> i think uh i think our we got a a notice from our church about how to make your own make your uh, own what bread your own bread and wine or for your own <laughs> communion yes. yeah right uh, so, some of our traditions we, we've talked oh, about that <laughs> like the episcopal church that i go to it's like mm, no we're not going to do that <laughs> Yeah, maybe I should order some of the hosts from a Catholic website. That would be awesome. I've got some, Christy, if you want them. Shut up. With a little cross on it. <laughs> Actually, I've got a recipe for baking your own. They're oh, not the little, God. they're not the cracker type hosts, but they're better. Yeah, an actual wine, communion wine. I've got that here, too. <laughs> Jealous. Looks like more people are joining. Um, I guess I should get started. I'm not sure how long this will take. Well, actually, we still got two minutes, it looks like. Oh, OK. Yeah, so that, oh. don't get too anxious. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm good to wait. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the J in the group and the Myers-Briggs. So I'm like, you can't start until exactly 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, otherwise, you have people um, you know, joining late. 
I was in a meeting. Well, I'll be mad. Was bad. I was in a, another meeting, totally unrelated to union. And uh, there was another person who was supposed to be there at, at this Zoom conference. And the leader of the meeting says, okay, everybody's here, but so-and-so, uh, uh, maybe we should wait until so-and-so gets here. And I said, nope, don't bother. She's always late. Don't let's just start without her. <laughs> and someone says, gee, there was the bus and someone got thrown under it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, if, if you're always late, deal with it. Then you miss something, yeah. Yep. I agree. Well, now, now I see three o'clock. What is a digital parking lot? Nope, it's three o'clock. I'll just chat it. Oh, it's okay. Mm. I can talk to you about it later. Or you could watch my session. Okay. And then you'll see it and how digital parking lots work. But I it's like, like parking lot. it's cool. four pages worth of content. Mm. So it's I have a cool. feeling my digital parking lot would be more like a digital junkyard. Hey, well... <laughs> happens to the best of us. Sometimes it turns into a junkyard whenever the students are commenting things that aren't relevant, but you know, just curate it. It'll be fine. All right, so yeah, it is um, three o'clock, so I'll, I'll start, a, I'll get started with, I guess, a soft start. Um, I guess I should introduce myself. Um, as you know, I'm um, Mr. or Mrs. Parmentier's um, husband, so uh, she's my wife, and uh, she works with you guys, most of you. And um, uh, I work at um, Jackson County Middle School. I'm a seventh grade teacher this year. Um, that's what I currently do. But in a past life, um, I was an instructional designer for um, universities and community colleges. Um, I was a designer for uh, Jackson Community College in Michigan, um, Florida Keys Community College in the Florida Keys. I've worked with um, the University of Michigan. I've worked with universities and community colleges um, I would say throughout the United States. Um, I am an advocate and a proponent of Moodle. Um, I've been supporting Moodle uh, as a user, as a developer, as an administrator for going on, I think, 15, 16 years since I last uh, tallied it up. Um, when I was working at um, Jackson Community College, just to give you an idea of scope, um, we had 30,000 online students. Um, our cash cow programs, if you want to call them that, are, would be the, they were the um, all, um, um, uh, sonar, ultrasound uh, programs and nursing programs. Uh, we also had business and even um, uh, a lot of physical education um, type classes online. We specialized in creating uh, our online classes as close to the face-to-face -face environment as we possibly could. Um, and I got into uh, instructional design uh, after receiving my um, teaching certification from the University of Michigan. I went on to work on my master's degree um, there as well to, uh, to do all this stuff. So that's a little bit about my background. And um, as I mentioned before, um, you guys work and probably have heard things through the grapevine or I've tried to help in different ways uh, with Moodle um, from uh, my wife working with you guys. So. Um, that's a little bit about my background. Uh, the chat's open. Um, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat as we uh, go through the session. Um, don't, you know, if you have a question, just, you know, shout out or put, put it in the chat and I'll, I'll go through it. Um, the Moodle I'm going to show you guys today is a Moodle installation I run for the middle school. Um, previously, I had run the same insta installation in the Florida Keys for students when I taught um, high school uh, there. Um, it's not a very large install, inst, um, installation. It'll support probably 5,000 users, and its overall cost is a whole whopping $50 a month. <laughs> um, my web clients uh, pay for it as part of um, their agreements to have me develop and host their websites. So it's essentially free, other than the time and energy it takes to uh, make it work. Um, so are there any questions at this point? Yes, I am a Moodle enthusiast. I see in the chat. I'm still a little bit lost in the digital parking lot, but I'm sure we'll, we'll get to that um, through sometime during the session. I, I hear it's a four page paper though, so. Um, all right, uh, an overall introdu introduction to Moodle. Um, I guess I'll, I'll share my screen with you guys and give you kind of a sneak peek of my system and we'll, we'll get more into that as the session goes on. So hopefully it'll work well with sharing my screen. You should be seeing um, the screen. 
And I'm actually going to take you right on out to the um, um, beginning of my site. This is what you would get if you put in openmoodle.org. Um, I originally created the site and named it openmoodle.org because it was available to any um, public education teachers or college instructors, anyone that wanted to use it. Um, I didn't really promote it, so there's only uh, myself and a couple of teachers I work with and um, a couple of other people on here. Um, so uh, this is it. And this is my class, English RTI for seventh grade. And what I did for you guys today is I put together a sandbox. Um, after the session's over, um, if people are really interested or want the uh, course backup file or MBZ file, I can, I can provide that to you guys um, without, probably without too many issues. I'm not sure if you can put it into your system or not, but I can make it available. So when I, when I go into the course, um, this is the way I design and try to set courses up. I always do a, ca a course banner. And then I do a few things that are um, kind of uh, a little bit different. I, I create icons that link into things like your course announcements, uh, live class sessions, the textbook, syllabus, uh, things like that. Um, overall, when you look at Moodle, Moodle is what you make of it. Um, it's really a system that can be as much or as little as, as the people that run it want it to be. Um, as far, you know, I hear a lot, oh, Moodle's free, it can't be that good. Well, um, Open Learn University's Moodle costs $5 million, and it's probably the, real, the most robust dynamic learning environment on the face of, of the planet. Um, when we're using Moodle, it's important to keep things like design, look, feel, and your student demographic in mind. Um, it's also uh, important to keep Moodle updated. A lot of institutions treat updates like migrations. And there's really no need for that. When an update from Moodle core comes out and it's stable, you, you really need to implement that update as soon as you can because there are security fixes, but bug fixes, a lot of things in there. And so ongoing maintenance and upgrading is essential to keeping a, a Moodle installation healthy and, and, and working well. Um, what else do I have as far as the overall aspects of Moodle? Um, Yes, and I, I covered it all. So Moodle, can, Moodle is what you make of it. Um, so with regards to the structure, I structured this session differently than I normally would a course um, because it's just a 45 minute session and I wanted you guys to be able to find things and see things um, differently. So when uh, at the top of the course, we have the banner. Banners can be interactive in Moodle. These um, contact social media icons could in fact work I didn't set them up that way to work um, today. I just put a nice banner in. Um, underneath the banner, I have the dynamic links. And these are achieved through what I'm gonna talk about in the Moodle makeover part of this, which is um, uh, using something called stealth uh, activity mode. Um, and I'll get into that um, in that module. Um, then I have my course format set up as topics, and then I name each of my topics. But my topics are a little bit differently because I've installed a plugin that lets me have um, the, the, the toggle um, functionality where I can open all of my uh, modules or close them all or open them individually. So the first module I usually you know, encourage instructors to put in is what, what the class or session is gonna cover. So you know, I threw together some objectives here. And when you put your course objectives in, they can be kind of um, uh, graph, I guess, iconified or made to look nice. Um, I, I just threw this together. And um, for this, you know, you guys should be able to identify useful technologies for online face-to-face -face and hybrid instruction, analyze and create fluid course Moodle courses, um, demonstrate quiz development in multiple formats, evaluate course usability and design for student demographics. Well, we'll see if we get to all of those, but um, I like to put my uh, learning objectives in um, at the beginning of the course. And sometimes if I put my course together in more of a linear uh, book format, so it reads like a textbook, it'll be the first page of like the book activity or a lesson module activity or database um, activity. Um, so our first module that we're gonna look at is technology tools with Moodle. Um, I always put things in as content, um, application, and then assessment. I'm not gonna quiz you guys today. I have assessments in here as examples and application as, as examples. And then I do have um, 
real content. So one of the first things that I um, am, am a huge advocate of and I really enjoy using is ExamView software. Um, if you have a textbook um, that you want to use for your class, a lot of publishers out there support um, ExamView and Respondus, and they will give you all of your chapter uh, questions for or questions for each chapter in ExamView files. And what I like about ExamView is I can take and create, you know, load a question bank into the ExamView software, and then I can deploy a uh, paper test for face-to-face. -face. I can version that test to limit cheating. Um, I can scramble questions and then print everything out. Um, or I can take that and output the same test as a Blackboard cartridge and import that into Moodle. And every question that I want is in the bank. And from there, I can deploy a quiz that pulls 25 questions from 150 bank, or maybe there's only 25 in the bank and I just want all 25 in the quiz and I want to randomize them, scrambling um, you know, answers and uh, questions. It, makes it more difficult for students to cheat. Um, and so I grabbed a, a, a tidbit from the ExamView uh, website. Their, their um, parent company is Turning Technologies. And it, as they uh, promote on their site, um, within minutes you can create assignments, long, launch classroom um, assessment questions, and correlate real-time responses to student performance. Um, they're designed uh, to work with the, the old clickers. I'm not a clicker fan. Um, I don't like uh, audience response systems. Um, I thought they were outdated when they first came out. Um, but that's where a lot of this um, technology comes from, but it's great for uh, um, you know, higher institu uh, uh, institutions of higher education. Uh, we processed hundreds of quizzes, thousands of questions for our students when um, I was working at the college. Um, and it's uh, it can be tricky uh, to get some uh, complicated assessments to work in exam view, especially those with um, uh, images. Uh, you have to be able to make sure you put your images into a folder. Moodle will recognize them and then they'll show up. But if you have um, problems with file structure, then you lose the images. So sometimes when you do course imports, restores, um, you can lose those images. And that usually affects science and math. Um, another software that is uh, really good um, software for assessments is Respondus. Um, they, they have the lockdown browser, which is meant to uh, aid in proctoring and um, making tests valid. So the student, taking the abilities of students um, to cheat away as much as they can. Um, they also have StudyMate Campus. I've never used that, but Respondus 4 is their, the main product that I used. And it's, just, it's essentially the same thing as ExamView. Um, a lot of textbook um, manufacturers will supply Respondus question banks, um, and then you deploy them into Blackboard format. But Moodle has been updated and um, supported to import the Blackboard um, cartridge formats uh, so that they'll load right into Moodle. And, and I will say both Respondus and ExamView, um, they have features to where you don't have to go into the software and type every question. I actually prefer to open a Word document and format that document in a, in a certain way by marking the question answers in each question. And then you can actually import those Word document um, quiz files into ExamView and then push them out into paper or online format. Respondus has a similar system of importing um, uh, questions from um, text files and uh, Word document files. Um, and, and that makes it nice because it, it's not too difficult if you have existing uh, Microsoft Word documents that, you, that were your quizzes, um, it's not that difficult to convert them with find and replace into being the format that these types of software can um, import. Um, ExamView, you know, it's, it's around $100 per user if you want to get your own license. Um, most people just use um, the software that comes with their textbook um, manufacturers. It's usually free. It's included right with uh, um, the, the publisher content. And then you also get the banks, and that's, that's what's valuable. Um, I loaded a couple of banks in for this, um, this uh, session today. Um, Respondus is a little bit pricier. It goes on uh, institutional level. 
um, pricing schema. So I haven't looked it up lately, but it's a little bit pricier, but it's definitely worth the, worth the expenditure. Cause I, for one hate typing quiz questions. It's, it's, I can't stand it. So, um, that's Respondus. And I wanted to kind of do an overview of some technologies that work well with Moodle and that I've used, um, a lot. Um, the next one up is Poodle, um, cool tools for language teachers. And that is the truth. Um, to kind of give you an overview, um, aside from the uh, uh, acronyms that they like to use and how they all kind of rhyme with Moodle and Poodle and Noodle tools, it, it, gets, it gets to be a little bit much, but Poodle is a really good tool. Um, as a web developer, when we put video and audio online, we're trying to put video and audio online for multiple formats. Um, students might access with a laptop, they might access with an iPad, they might access with a phone. And in order to get the proper HTML5 formats for video and audio, usually you have to create three files. Um, and you bind those three files into an, into an object embed. And then uh, if the student pulls it up on an iPhone, um, it might do an AUG file or some other audio file. It's there, it just defaults to whatever. Well, that makes it really difficult for the instructor or someone trying to design a class who wants to put audio into their quizzes or, or put an audio um, in for an audio book. It, it's a lot of work to convert those files that many ways and then wrap the embed with HTML5 so that the user has, an, has a good experience. So what Poodle does is they've integrated with Moodle and in your editor, when you create an activity or a quiz question, um, they give you a set of tools that are available right in the, ad in the editor. You can record your live voice right there um, you can drag and drop audio and it converts it automatically and embeds it into the, into the course. And it is site-wide. So you can pretty much put audio anywhere within the um, Moodle environment and it gives you these little players. Um, and the players, you have a lot of control of how they look and how they feel. I, I, I wanted to use this for my students who struggle with reading. So when I give them reading passages in web format on Moodle, um, any three or more syllable words, I could actually drop an audio file on. And if they couldn't sound it out, they could actually click the word and get that word pronounced for them. Uh, Poodle also comes, if, you're, if you happen to be a language teacher, um, it comes with uh, Miss Q analysis. As far in, with regard to that, it's actually an algorithm. Uh, Miss Q analysis is where you have a student, uh, you present them with a passage, usually 100 words, they read the hundred words and you time them for a minute. And it's all about how many of those words they get correct in that time. And then there's a formula you calculate and it gives you their reading level. Um, Poodle has a um, feature uh, as part of that package that will allow Moodle to, you choose the passage, but Moodle will actually do the analysis and give you the lexile or grade level that the student's performing at. It's not a hundred percent. You usually have to go back over it and listen to it and do the manual miscue, and it gives you a suite of tools to do that. But I, I really liked it because I didn't have a way to identify where my students were at in middle school with reading, um, and I could have used it in college. Yes, believe it or not, I think there are issues with um, incoming freshmen, especially at community colleges, with uh, regards to reading levels. So if you can identify where they're at, then you can kind of work more toward, towards um, bridging the gap. And um, Poodle is a, is a great resource for that. Um, it's available, they are open source. They do have to charge because the servers to run this are expensive and they do like institutional pricing. And it's pretty reasonable. It's probably like a couple of grand um, for an institution or a couple of hundred bucks for um, an instructor to use on their, on their own is just one instructor. Um, so that kind of gives an overview of some of the, um, uh, technologies that I like to use alongside with Moodle. Um, so if I jump back out to our modules here, um, I forgot actually what I put under the apply, but um, oh, this is the Turning Technologies website. So if you are interested and want to read more about ExamView, um, you'll go to turningtechnologies.com and um, they have a whole explanation of why to use ExamView, um, uh, how, to, how to leverage um, you know, publisher content, um, you know, they give a good overview and there's, vi there's, um, instructional videos on here as well. And on YouTube, there are 
thousands of videos on how to create exam view quizzes and um, all the bells and whistles that go with that. Um, under assessment, um, this would be um, an example of the uh, quiz I rendered out today for you guys for math. Uh, math, I like to choose math because English is easy. Uh, the worst case you're going to run into as an English teacher, you might want to add an image or a painting for them to talk about or answer questions about. But math, you get into all these symbols, and that's what I was talking about with the image um, files needing to be aligned right. And so this is a 156 question test. It took me maybe five minutes to upload this into Moodle and have it deployed as you see it. This test is ready to go. Um, I could have has set the settings to choose a random number, uh, like 25 of the 156, and you're really not gonna get students seeing the same questions, so they can sit next to each other in a computer lab, and they're not gonna be able to look on each other's screens and, and um, cheat. Um, and it's pretty standard. You can go in um, from, you know, this is what the textbook manufacturer gives you from the book. Um, but I always tell instructors, go in, read the questions, reword them. So these are all editable. You can change any aspect of these questions. And I usually set my quizzes to 10 questions per page. Um, and then it gives, you know, the next page on through. And this would be like 10 or 15 pages with as long as it is. But that is what um, uh, you get from an exam view uh, import into Moodle. Um, if I jump back here and go to uh, the rest of the course, um, I have some other examples in um, from Poodle. I don't have any examples of Respondus because honestly, I use exam view and I have not found the need to purchase Respondus, so I couldn't put any examples in for you guys today. But with Poodle, um, Again, I work with seventh grade students and I wanted to have them read the book Tangerine. That's a novel. And so I put, I think, part one of the novel into Moodle for, for this today. But um, I have each chapter in uh, a book module. So this is a book activity in Moodle. But I've also put the audio. So I don't know if you guys are going to be able to hear this, but you know what, I know you guys are not gonna be able to because I'd have had to click that little button on Zoom that said share computer audio. But this is the actual audio book and it reads along with the text. So my students can listen and follow along with each chapter. And then as they go from chapter one on to chapter two, there's navigation on the side and each chapter has the audio for that chapter with it. And I didn't have to do anything more than just drag and drop um, these audio files in with the Poodle um, function. If I was to do this now with just um, regular Moodle, um, I would have to go into Audacity, uh, which is an Adobe product, and create the, um, the MP4, MP3 file. Then once I get the MP3 file, you could upload it into your Moodle repository and then deploy it into the book module in Siri. A few more steps. Um, Poodle can make that a little bit easier. Um, again, I'm working with students at, at the middle school level. Um, you may very well be at the college level as well, who have um, IEPs, they have um, accommodations, um, you know, all kinds of things. And so one of the things that I do for students that um, need help with uh, reading or pronunciation is I will put um, the question um, audio in. So if they have trouble reading the question, and they have something that allows you, that says you have to read the questions to them, you can put the audio in and when they play it, um, they get the question read to them. And the way I created these um, was once I go in to edit my question in Moodle, with the Poodle tools you get, the record your voice. And I just click record, I have my microphone here um, and I just read the question. And I create one file, so I read the question and then go through each answer. And I'm careful not to give any emphasis on the correct answer or an incorrect answer and so forth. Um, but that's a, that should illustrate how um, Poodle makes it really easy to deploy audio and video. And, as, and this works the other way as well. If you want students to respond uh, to a discussion board or to an assignment with a video or audio, it makes it really easy. Because again, if you don't have that feature, uh, your students are going to be required to use some type of um, editing software to get that file set and then to upload the file and it becomes a lot more challenging. So um, let me jump back into the sandbox here. And I think that covers technology tools with Moodle. Um, 
the Poodle test is um, another example um, of embedded audio. And it looks like I grabbed the wrong test, so we'll skip that one. <laughs> so, um, all right, so moving on. Um, let me jump out and check the uh, chat here real quick and see if there are any questions. Um, yes, free audio recorders on Mac, saved as MP4. You know about the steps. And okay, I'm gonna jump back in and share my screen and move to the next part. Because I have a feeling you guys are gonna be pretty excited for the last part. Maybe we'll see. Hey Chad. Yeah. I've also um, added, I, I've been answering some of the chat questions and I added your email to the chat if anybody okay. wants to contact you afterwards and ha they have any questions. Okay. Um, the next part is synchronous instructional uh, delivery. Um, I'm a proponent of um, having multiple ways for students to access um, course material. However, even when I teach every day now remotely because of COVID-19, um, I hold one live session every single day. Not, not, not every day, almost every day at 1.30 for my students. And I use Zoom um, because Zoom's a good tool. Um, I don't like Google Meet. I don't like uh, a lot of the other free software out there because I have certain things that I need for my middle school students. And a lot of those needs are gonna be the same is what um, uh, college instructors need for their students. You need to have control over your participants' audio, their video. You need to be able to have security features to remove them from the uh, presentation, um, the session, if you will. You need to be able to lock down a lot of different elements, especially when you're dealing with um, high school, middle school kids, and, and even uh, freshmen in college. They, they tend to like to play around. I know there's been a lot of uh, bad press on Zoom. Um, well, take it from the source. Uh, Google's obviously trying to push Google Meet. Google is the largest search engine, so there you can see why most um, criticism of Zoom is probably going to rise quite quickly to the top of the Google um, search uh, results. Um, but really, Zoom is, uh, it is 100% secure. It's, it's up to the user to make sure that it's secure. Um, the issues that were in the news were happening because, um, like my school, uh, a lot of teachers were saying, oh, I'm going to use Zoom. Well, how do I get that information to students so they can join my class? If they didn't have Moodle or were trying to use Google Classroom, schools were publishing the meeting links on the front page of their website, which was open to the public. Anyone could just do a targeted Google search and jump into these Zoom sessions. Um, that was user error, not really product error. Um, you can lock it down. And you always could lock it down with passwords. Um, you could lock it down with a waiting room. Um, they just brought these features more to the forefront once, um, you know, they got bad press. But enough of the bad press stuff. Um, Zoom is a great tool. It does have a 100% um, integration with Moodle. And uh, it is, um, well, let me jump into the, the right up here. Um, it, it's, it, when I say integrated with Moodle, um, it means it, it shows up as an activity. So if you're looking to add a Zoom meeting and this installation is gonna look different, um, you're going to see uh, the option to um, join a Zoom meeting as you can see here. <coughs> when you do that, you'll have some options available. So you can set the meeting to reoccurring or just a one-time event. But what I like about the actual integration is that it's using the authentication piece from Moodle. So the only students that can get to that activity are, are authenticated students in your Moodle course. Then once the student clicks on the Zoom meeting, it grabs their authentication information and it gives you their name in the Zoom environment. So you're gonna see if you have someone enrolled as, as um, Johnny Smith, they're gonna show up in your Zoom meeting as Johnny Smith as well. You can allow them to change their names, but you can also um, deactivate that function in Zoom and then they're locked into coming in with whatever, uh, authentic, however they authenticated to Moodle. Um, <clears throat> again, you can set several of the settings from the Moodle environment from, the, from when you launch the activity. And I'll actually show you guys this in real time because I've got it installed. This only works on the paid or business versions of Zoom. It will not work on the free version because you have to do a, um, an API handshake in order to install this in your Moodle system. 
but it is free. Um, and at least to the users, you, there's a cost for the paid ver version for institutions. So <clears throat> no, I don't have COVID. I just have um, cough from talking too much. <laughs> so, um, so Zoom is a, is a great synchronous tool to use. It allows uh, you to do basically what I'm doing with you guys with your students right now. Um, and if I go back, um, one of the other tools I like to use is, um, uh, oh, well, <laughs> this comes into how you capture your Zoom um, uh, systems. So let's talk about uh, Panopto or Panop2. Oh, and I think I may have forgot to link my page in. So you're going to get to see the uh, preview here of um, what this looks like from admin view. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, and we want the lecture cap. It might be good to show them that too. Yeah, I was going to in the next um, module. So um, uh, lecture capture. Uh, another thing I, I really um, encourage for institutions, colleges mainly, there's no way they're ever going to spend the coin for this. And um, Well, actually, I did recommend it to my middle school. We'll see. Um, I keep telling them, I'm like, look at how much you're saving. No transportation, no lunches, no subs. Can we spend this money? Anyways, um, if I was able to spend that money, my first choice would be for a lecture cam. Um, not something that's just gonna sit on your desk. I'm talking about lecture cams that are installed um, into the ceiling of your classroom. They have usually some type of a device the instructor wears so that it can rotate 360 degrees and track and follow you. Um, audio uh, devices around the room or even uh, ones that can be handed to the students um, for audience so that you can pick up the audio appropriately. Um, this is just one of the many um, providers out there for lecture cams. And it talks about the equipment, um, what equipment you'll need for uh, recording lectures or for live streaming them. And you have, uh, you have um, some of these systems come in as computers, um, like the Nook and um, some different server level things. And you've got the actual cameras. Um, that's the server um, that I was talking about. Um, the cameras uh, can range from in ceiling mounted to your, um, your professional uh, grade cameras. Um, your audio devices can be something that sits on a desk to a lapel mic to ceiling mounted microphones. <coughs> um, most of the cameras will um, support pan, tilt, and zoom. These are nice because it allows you to teach as an instructor in your classroom, in your normal environment, and stream that class live. And then if you have a, an instructional assistant or aide, um, when we did this at Jackson Community College for our nursing students, we would have um, someone watching the chats for our online students so that we could you know, get their questions out to the live um, instructor. And um, it's really nice because once you've you've delivered your face-to-face -face class and streamed it live, you've reached the audience that's not only in front of you, but the audience that's abroad or you know, uh, logging in from home. But what about those students who miss? Once you have a live session, you can take the recording and put the recording up for them to view um, or review uh, when they have time. Um, it's not as good, but it's better than having missed a class. So it really cuts down on um, students missing information, especially if, you're, um, if, you, if you teach a class that has a lot of lecture in with it. And so um, I really uh, am an advocate for, um, for lecture cams in classrooms, uh, just because then you can give uh, the best of all worlds to your, stu to your students. You can have them face-to-face, uh, -face, stream um, simultaneously, and then offer them a recording um, of that if they happen to have missed class. So um, let me jump back out of here. Sorry, my link didn't work. I'll go back to my normal view. So, um, hey, Chad. Yeah. Um, we have a couple questions, okay. and I think I'm, maybe you can answer them. Um, Bruce, I'm, I'm trying to figure out your question. Uh, Chad is demonstrating our Moodle. Um, which is an upgraded Moodle 
Um, and he's also demonstrating some of the technologies you could add to your wish list, which is what Dr. Greer has been talking about. Um, she wants to know what technology would help us improve teaching. And this is one of them, the lecture capture is one of them that could improve both um, online teaching and in-class teaching. So let's say we only went back partial, you know, in class and you still had some students online, this way you could lecture and have a class discussion and have students participating online as well. Um, I think that answers the question. Yeah, and, that, and that's, you know, that's really, that, that's, the, that's the crux of it. That's the important piece is that you're saving your time because I had instructors that would teach their face-to-face -face classes with me or with their classes. Then they would come see me as an instructional designer and say, you know, I want to record my lecture. So they'd come down to my office uh, and we had a studio set up with a green screen and then we would green screen them um, and put the recording up. Well, in a lot of the instances, um, the instructors said, you know, I feel I would feel better, uh, you know, doing the recording off the cuff when I'm in class because that's that's the real thing. I don't like it scripted and all that. So some instructors like that, which is great, uh, doing it on green screen in the studio. Um, but a lot of others had, had requested, why can't I just do this real time on the cuff? And we in fact did that. Um, our nursing program, uh, we had a state of the art um, lab with the uh, really expensive um, uh, dummy. We could, uh, they could control what symptoms the um, Annie doll or whatever it was uh, had. Students were videoed being presented with different scenarios and all that was streamed live and recorded and then put up later on for the remote students who were taking part in that. So I'll go back to my screen share real quick here. Does anyone want to unmute themselves and ask any questions? Yeah, please do. Uh, yes, this is uh, Keith. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so, obviously, some of this classroom lecture capture is not available with the free Moodle. I was actually looking for something more, I guess a better word for it than lecture would be recitation. Where I could, whether it be in a classroom, because I would probably need some place with a board anyway, uh, rather than my office, but where, you know, I could just, I'm math, so could go over some, you know, types of exercises, just something that, where it's not necessarily a, you know, a full, fledged lecture, but where I could do some video and I could demonstrate some uh, techniques, methods of solution and so forth. Do we have access to things like that? Yeah, I would say you do. I mean, um, I don't know if, you know, Union can, I, I don't know, I don't know if Union's going to go with the Zoom integration with Moodle. But you don't need the integration. Um, you can use Zoom as a user. I mean, I personally pay the $19 a month. I mean, it's 14 actually, uh, for the personal uh, version of Zoom. But I don't need the Moodle integration. If I worked for an institution that was, you know, not allowing me to do what I want as an instructor, I would just go ahead and pay the $14 a month for Zoom personal. Um, so I get all those bells and whistles. And then you might not be able to deploy a Zoom activity from you know, the Moodle activities area, but you can grab the Zoom link like I did for this uh, conference. And I created a fancy icon, made the link there. And then I made my uh, Zoom meeting ongoing in the Zoom uh, software. So every time I click that icon now in Moodle, the one you see up at the top right here, um, it launches me right into Zoom and that meeting starts. That's how I started it today. So you so can do that. And then the recordings, you, you click record and it'll record to your computer. I put them on YouTube and then okay. embed the um, YouTube through a URL activity of Moodle. So in other words, I could do something just like this. Absolutely. Only, only I would be the host. And it, you know, it would be limited to some degree, but all I would need is my laptop. That is where it can, I'd have to set it in the right position so that it would record part of the board that 
Is that correct? That's correct. And I, I have a snowball um, mic I got for like 25 bucks on eBay that, you know, works and sounds great. It's a little bit better quality than your, your laptop. But yeah, I mean, uh, I do this at the middle school level. Before I end the session today, I'll show you my actual middle school class um, with all the live sessions. And I, I have very little invested in it um, overall. I, I don't want to take up too much time, but I do have one other question about when you were showing the math, I, I am uh, against multiple choice uh, math tests. Um, I think they're inappropriate. And uh, it looked like there were text boxes there. Is there, are there capabilities with those tests where they can answer questions longhand or, you know, like that? I mean, yeah. can, Yes, um, and that was that was something that we worked with extensively at um, several of the colleges I worked for before. Um, all learning management systems are able to um, accept or integrate with uh, equation editors. So you can actually have students use, I gotta remember them off the top of my head, I think Hot Potatoes has a version. There, there's several versions of equation editors that can be right. installed. And the student can answer the question in almost like an essay format using the, the equation editor. So they would have to basically write out um, what it is you want them to write out. Sorry, I'm not a math person, but they could use the, um, the equation editor to create the uh, complicated math equation and answer for what the question is it, using all the special um, you know, symbols and whatnot that are required right. for. I, I use the equation editor, but this is for just like making tests on uh, Word uh, through math type. And I imagine math type would have uh, something that would um, the word slips me but interact with this but that seems like a large high learning curve for them to learn how to use an equation editor uh, so I don't know it would I mean under any mode uh, I'm considering that uh, right, this is not, for example if I had students actually doing their tests by hand and they would either take a picture with an app and send it as a PDF a few of them tried to type, you know, and they said it was very time consuming and they just don't know how to use the equation editor or even things that they could use um, like uh, subscripting and so forth. Uh, some basic stuff actually that any word processor can do, you know, but anyhow, I'll, I'll, I'll yield. And there probably are some other um, things that would work for that. In fact, I would actually look into, um, Poodle because there's also, I think, a related company that um, has whiteboard tools. Um, uh, DocAs uh, is one that's free. That's and actually they have a paid and a free version that works sometimes really well for um, annotating and editing PDF files. So if you were to put a, a math question into a PDF, they would be able to edit that and then submit that to you as an assignment file. But that I can more. follow up with Hillary on that later and. Get that info okay. out to you. As far as the um, yeah. 14 monthly fee, that's just for software. There's no, um, you wouldn't get any anything with that. That is like you showed me that that my that that is something you had to purchase. You wouldn't get any um, equipment or software or hardware. Correct? That fourteen dollars a month you're paying. Oh no no, you just get the uh, enhanced uh, version of Zoom. Um, as far as hardware goes, most most of it's gonna work. Um, you know, if you have a laptop, they work fine. That's what Hillary yeah. uses every day. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you can request some of that from tech too on your wish list if you'd like a microphone or if you don't have one of the newer laptops, you know, it, I would request that because that's all necessary now that you guys are working online. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, the last part of this, uh, uh, we don't have a lot of time, but I, I, if you guys are interested, I can um, explain more and talk about it. Um, the last part of this was the Moodle makeover. So I've given you guys some uh, insights into technology uh, as far as um, exam view, Respondus, Zoom, Poodle, hardware uh, for lecture cam. Um, those are the, exter the external components of Moodle. But what, what you need to also think about is how, you're, how you want your Moodle to look. And I have seen some pretty sad Moodle installations, not installations, but just courses that 
are very bland and very uh, confusing to, to, to navigate. Um, so the last part of this is the Moodle makeover. And you may be wondering or asking yourselves, how in the world uh, did I get my course banner and all these nice icons to represent the actual activity functions of Moodle? And including like here, uh, the technology tools with Moodle, it's all icons, but those are actually um, activities. Uh, you have content, which is a web page, and then you have uh, the apply, which I think was a link, and then the assessment, which was a quiz. Uh, then there's a book module and um, other quiz modules. So same thing with the Zoom and um, Panopto um, software. You can display information to your users in any way you want, any way you can, can imagine. And the way that's achieved is through uh, something that's been available in Moodle since Moodle 3.3, uh, I believe. Yes, 3.3. And that is using stealth activities. So normally when you create a Moodle activity, whether it's a resource or a quiz, test, any, anything in Moodle, uh, it's gonna give you a link. Now, prior to Moodle 3.3, a lot of us designers found that if you, know, you took your activities, and I'm gonna jump out to kind of explain what I'm, to show what I'm talking about here. So if I go, and here's where you get to see the, what's under the hood here. So as you can see here, I have announcements, syllabus, and textbook. Well, these icons represent announcements, textbook, syllabus, and then my Zoom live class is just a link. And I, and I code that in through a label. So this is actually a label um, in Moodle, but these have been blacked out or blurred or you know, grayed out. You guys cannot see these as students or um, as users. And before Moodle 3.3, we would achieve this by going all the way down to the bottom of the course, creating another topic, and putting everything we wanted to beautify um, into that topic. And um, from there, we would, uh, I'm gonna move this Zoom thing. Uh, from there, well, that, was, that worked. Uh, from there, we would, uh, they would become orphaned, and the glitch allowed students to still be able to access uh, an activity even though it was hidden, but they were accessing it through a, a link from a label. Well, after Moodle 3.3, um, in lots of discussion and lots of arguments, um, the people that design courses convinced Moodle Core to enable something called stealth activities. Um, again, this is in every Moodle version uh, from 3.3. Whether the administrator has turned it on is another thing, um, but if, if you have any version of Moodle beyond 3.3, uh, the administrator can go in, click a, literally click a checkbox, and then uh, the stealth activities will be available to you. And what that means is when you actually look at, let's say, oh, let's go into this activity here. When I edit the settings, what will show when you edit, when you enable that, is under your, um, availability settings, common module settings, under availability, you'll have a new option. Instead of show on course page and hide from students, you'll have make available but not shown on course page. That is critical if you wanna have any say in how the front of your Moodle looks. Because if you hide the activity from students in versions from 3.3 and, and beyond, the students will not be able to get to it even if you link it in through a label. So by, 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 um, by activating the stealth um, mode in Moodle, it makes this option available, which is make available but not shown. So if you, if you choose that and you go back to um, your course, these will be grayed out. So then I just click on the item and copy the link. And then when I create a label, like right here, um, I can find whatever icons I want in. Uh, I'll usually put them in a table because it's easier to kind of control the, the where they, how they're laid out in Moodle with the table. And then I'll just put each icon in and then I'll click on it and I'll put the link uh, to each of those hidden activities. So then the students presented with a nice graphic, um, I guess, uh, interface to use 
for those elements that they're going to use a lot, such as announcements or live class sessions or the textbook for the class or, or the syllabus. And from students aged middle school all the way through post you know, into graduate students, I have found that they navigate the course better and really like um, when courses are, are set up like this. And so if I go back to the class, it'll, it'll also allow you to organize your modules. So there's nothing uh, fancy going on here with the learning objectives. That's just a label that I formatted to look nice and to present the, um, the objectives to the students. Um, now the technology tools, instead of having these linear links listed and shown to students, I've hidden them using that um, stealth mode. And then in a label, um, I've created a label and then just put the icons in I wanted and made it so that the, it was uh, more of like a Tradoc where you have the instruction or the resource, application, and then assessment. That's one way of organizing it. Um, so on the next module, I thought, well, I'll do it a different way. And then I also put examples in for, um, for, the, for that module as well. Uh, for the next one, I wanted to have like, kind of like teasers, like a, have an icon and then a description so students would know maybe you could do something like, okay, it's Monday. This is what we're going to do Monday. When they click on Monday, it takes them into a web page with more information. There's really, the only limit there is to um, using this function is your creativity. You can literally do whatever you want and make Moodle look however you want um, with, with that tool. And that's why I think it's critical. And that tool doesn't cost anything. It's, it's, it's readily available. Um, and then the last module, I did it similar to the one up here. Uh, you have the Moodle makeover tips, and that takes you to the Moodle. Um, I actually embedded the Moodle uh, page on Stealth Activities, where they give you a video and they show you everything, um, how it works. And what's interesting is, um, I don't know if Mary Cooch is the person who um, was the advocate of this. She works for Newberry College. She's a theme designer and uh, well-known in the Moodle community. She uh, specializes in course design and um, she was one of the driving forces behind getting this um, put into uh, core code so that it's maintained. So let me see uh, the chat room and see if there's any questions here. All right, I don't know if uh, Hil Hillary's still on here or not. Yes, I'm still here. Oh, did I miss a ton of questions? <laughs> no, I've been um, taking a look at it. Okay. And it looks pretty good. And, and you might want to just unmute if you have a question, because we have another session that's going to be starting at four. But I, I'm also putting Chad's email in the chat. If you have questions or you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting, um, feel free to email him. Does anyone have any questions about the stealth mode or how to beautify your uh, Moodle course? Um, does 3.3 allow grades to show for the stealth activities? Um, you answered that. For I think me. you already answered that. Yeah. She said. Oh, okay. Yeah, it works the same. It really, it, it's really about changing the the user interface on the front part of Moodle. So everything else is going to work the same. All the advanced features, if you're into, um, you know, tracking the learning outcomes, if you can, if your Moodle set up that way. Um, down to groupings and cohorts and groups. Um, I did mention, uh, just again, unmute yourself and um, feel free to interrupt me if you have a question, but the last thing I'll show is, um, I'll show the class that I actually teach every day um, in my system. My Moodle is Moodle uh, 3.7. Um, there's really not a lot of bells and whistles into it. It's a pretty standard installation. I just keep it updated and maintained um, pretty religiously. And um, this here is the class that I teach um, every day. Uh, we've been doing this for nine weeks. We went from full face-to-face -face in, a, in a middle school environment, as you can imagine, to fully online, which no school in the country was prepared for. And our content uh, level is probably, oh, I don't know, 10 times heavier than a college class because it's five days a week. It's, it's five days a week, 
and I have six preps um, all the same. Well, I have six classes and with one prep. So um, in my course, I have to give my students an uh, introduction, how to use it. Um, then I have those icons for the things that they're going to use every day. The live class session, they have to ch check in weekly with the discussion board. Then they've got their novel that, they work, that they're working on, both the interactive audio version and then the regular text version. Um, I use the same uh, plugin uh, that allows them to um, toggle all of their modules, which you can see there are a ton of. Um, I have to do mine for every day. And for each day, now let's get into the regular days here. I usually give them a handout, maybe some, well, this is, a, it, since we've gone remote, here's regular remote stuff. I'll give them the chapter for the day. Um, I'll give them the audio. They'll have their ongoing discussion board um, uh, check. And then every Zoom meeting each day is live, but after it's live, I put up the class recording. And then if they miss, they can actually go in and see the, the class re recording each day where I would go over the novel or do it, whatever it was that we were doing. Um, and so as you can see, um, at least in my world, um, the content can stack up really fast and keeping things organized is not only critical for the instructor, I mean, I need to keep things organized, that helps me, but it also helps the students. And so um, the only thing that's kind of strange about my installation is the, is the fact that I can collapse the, uh, the topic sections. Um, and I did that so that the, my, my students could find things um, easier. And it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a um, supported plugin um, in Moodle. And when I say support, when I say supported, most plugins now are supported, but back in the day, um, any person that could slightly code would hack their way into something that they wanted for Moodle. And you could install a plugin and it would lock up your whole system. There were lots of issues with that. So what they did is they made a, a, an accepted supported plugin section. So if you get a plugin, it's gonna be supported. You can still put those unsupported plugins in, but um, you need to be a developer, or have a lot of experience to make sure that they're not gonna conflict or cause problems with the installation. But uh, regular plugins like this are, are supported. And a lot of um, companies and corporations are um, creating plugins for their products for Moodle. That's what Zoom did. Zoom wrote the integration for Moodle um, in conjunction with Moodle and by using Moodle site guidelines for that. So I'll jump back into the chat and see uh, where we're at and see if there's any questions. All right, no more questions? All right. Well, I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed today's session. Um, I, like I said, I, if you guys want um, any of the activities or a course copy of what I showed you guys today, I'd be happy to give that to you. Um, just email me and I can send that. If you want information on exam view or respond to us, um, I'd be happy to uh, provide that as well. Um, I think these tools are kind of what you need to deliver a really good, um, you know, a multi-mode class. And uh, they, these tools have been what I found to work best. There are many other tools out there, but I, I thought this would be a, a good uh, bag of tools for someone to get started with. So I guess if there's no other questions, um, that will conclude everything for this meeting and we'll put the recording up um, afterward. Thank you everyone. Enjoy the rest of the sessions. Let us know if you have any questions. If you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one session with Chad, um, I sent you the, I posted the email in the chat. If you're not sure or if you didn't see it, just email me um, at hparmentier at unionky.edu. Thanks everyone. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.